In 2019, you can play Sega Genesis games on damn near everything. It's on your PC officially and unofficially. It's on your phone, your handheld game systems, your consoles. Heck, there are even dedicated devices with the branding. Nobody has ever needed to ask for help finding a way to play Sega's 16-bit entry. For years, the Genesis has had dedicated mini consoles available for the masses. These cheaply produced mainstream products really didn't focus on giving the end user an accurate representation of the Genesis experience, instead focusing on value proposition and ease of use. Longtime fans wanted more. They wanted a better made product with more accurate software. They wanted a better selection of games. They wanted a product that was closer to their memories of what the Sega Genesis experience had actually been. Finally, on September 19th of 2019, Sega has released a product that is trying to do just that. Welcome to my look at the Sega Genesis Mini. One of the most appealing aspects about these mini systems is the fact that it recreates the look of the original device. This is damn near as important as the software on it, as game collectors are often a tactile bunch that crave quality in the makeup of their wares as much as anything else. The Sega Genesis Mini shines like a star in this department, with high quality plastic, great looking brand labeling, and cool little touches like moving cartridge flaps and volume slider, though these things are purely cosmetic. Even the box of the Sega Genesis Mini is a success, capturing the look and feel of the post-Sonic days of the hardware. The art is faithful, nostalgic, and displays like an absolute champ. My only complaint here is that Sega missed a big opportunity to score collectors by releasing a few box variants of the Genesis releases. I would have loved to have seen an Altered Beast variant, or the rare Streets of Rage 2 version of the Genesis. This would have been an easy thing to implement, especially considering all these games are actually on the system anyway. One area of ill repute was Sega's decision to include three-button controllers with the North American and European versions of the console. While this is accurate to the era the Model 1 Genesis was marketed in, it was a real head-scratcher, since games like Street Fighter II Special Champion Edition almost require a six-button pad to fully enjoy. The controller itself is a pretty accurate representation of the original, however. If you have ever played with one of these behemoths, you either have a fine appreciation for its classic aesthetic, or you freaking hate its oversized, too-few-button design. I don't mind the design myself, I've always appreciated the accurate D-pad and the tight row of three buttons that almost always paired well with your attack jump magic style of game. Sega was all about the arcade experience with the Genesis, and this pad served its purpose in the early years of the hardware. From a quality standpoint, these controllers are fairly solid. They feel similar to the original design in weight, button pressure, and D-pad tightness. Also included in the box is an HDMI cable, a power adapter, and an instruction manual. Firing up the Sega Genesis Mini for the first time brings you to the startup screen. Choose your language and off you go. An important note to those of you interested in different regions, if you set the language to Japanese, you will get the Mega Drive skin of the front end, as well as the Japanese Mega Drive box art where applicable. You also get the Japanese ROM, so a game like Castlevania Bloodlines becomes Vampire Killer. The front end allows you to adjust a few options, including 4, 3, and 16x9 display preferences, as well as wallpaper if that's your thing. The main menu is set to a combination of music from the various games on the unit. It sounds okay, but with Yuzo Kashiro in charge of it, I was looking for something with a little more, let's say, oomph. Like most of these mini console systems, you get the option to save your game via save state slots. Each game has four slots allocated to it, making some games far easier than the saveless cartridges back in the day. To get to the end game menu, simply hold start for three to five seconds and it pops up, allowing you to save, load, or go back to the main menu of games. Most people were screaming victory early when it was announced that M2 would be in charge of the emulation for the Genesis Mini. 
These guys have been involved with some of the best ports of older games you can get your hands on, so it seemed a huge win for Sega fans to have them on board. So how exactly did they do here? For the most part, pretty well. The visuals themselves are an absolute grand slam. The 720p output is crisp, clean, and faithful to the original presentations, right down to the sprite flicker and Altered Beast. One area where the previous Genesis mini consoles have really dropped the ball has been the sound and music, and unfortunately M2 fumbles a bit here themselves. The overall quality is impressive, with most of the stuff you'll hear here being damn close to the original, and only Genesis superfans being capable of picking it apart. But what most of you will likely notice is the slight lag to the sound effects that rears up in nearly every game. You'll notice it more in some games than others, but it's there. And while I can't say it's terrible, it's something I was constantly aware of, especially in the games I know extremely well. Overall, it's the best out-of-the-box experience I've seen for any Genesis-related product like this. So while I am slightly disappointed in the sound, I'm extremely happy with the overall quality of the experience. Let's do a few sound comparisons so you can hear it for yourself. Another area of excitement has been the library that was announced for the Mini. Finally, we have some big hit third-party entries in a device such as this, like Castlevania, Contra, Earthworm Jim, and Super Fantasy Zone. While not everyone will be happy, and there will always be something missing in a box like this, the library of offerings is impressive nonetheless. You get some RPGs, some adventure games, some fighting games, a few puzzle games, a few shoot 'em ups, and Sega even got staples like Road Rash on here. It's a good mix of games and genres, and while I would have liked to have seen stuff like Space Harrier 2, 
Virtua Fighter 2 and Alex Kidd replaced with other games like OutRun, eSWAT, and Mortal Kombat 2, I am happy with the overall selection. The two big additional games to round out the library of 42 were the surprise inclusions of Tetris and Darius. Neither game had been officially released on the Genesis before, and I was looking forward to seeing how these two turned out. Darius is a port of the 1987 arcade original, a brutally hard shoot 'em up that spanned three CRT screens. This port of course had to zoom in on the action, yet keeps the frenzied pace of the enemies in their attacks. This means the screen is quickly overrun in even the first area, leading to frustration for those of us unfamiliar with the patterns. You'll need to put in some time and effort in seeing the later stages in this one, but I must say I'm impressed with the overall closeness to the original arcade presentation. The second game was Tetris, a port of the Sega System 16 arcade game that was never released on the Genesis. This is a bare bones Tetris experience, lacking many of the options in the later efforts. It's important to note that this is not the super rare Japanese Mega Drive version. While that version was based on the same System 16 arcade edition, it has many more options including a time trial and a two player co-op mode. While it is cool to see a new game never before released on the Genesis, I feel this could have been a much better addition had it actually been the Japanese Mega Drive version. And if licensing somehow disqualified that, where the hell is Revenge of Shinobi? I'd also like to note that I tried a few different controllers with the Sega Genesis Mini. As expected, the Sega licensed Retrobit USB pads picked right up with no issue and worked great in every game I tried. The addition of the mode button on the controller even allows you instant access to the main menu of the system. Unfortunately, pretty much everything else failed to pick up. I tried a wired solution with the 8-bit Do M30, which didn't work, and I even tried my cheap knockoff pads from companies like Hyperkin, which did not work either. When it's all said and done, the Sega Genesis Mini isn't just about another way to play Sega Genesis games. We as fans really didn't need another way to play these games. What it is really about is Sega taking its legacy of arcade and console hardware and software seriously handling it internally, and giving it the respect it deserves. Sega was home to millions of gamers growing up, and these types of legacy devices should not be built primarily for the lowest common denominator. Sega fans want and deserve quality, and when it's there, we are willing to put out the funds to support it. Sega has a wealth of content in its backlog. I'm talking hundreds of games that have no modern equivalent beyond community-created emulation. Sega has fans that go well beyond their 16-bit successes, and hopefully, the success of this unit will motivate them to explore it. I'm SegaLordX, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.